So boys and girls, we've read lots of Junie B. Jones, the author, um, Barbara Park. Today, I'm going to read one of my favorite stories, still Junie B, and it's Junie B. Jones, Boss of Lunch. But before I read, I want to ask you some questions. Can you tell me in all of the Junie B. Jones stories we've read, who has been the main character? Lucas. Junie B. Junie B, she's in every story. But now, we've read so many um, Junie B. Jones books in this series from Barbara Park. Can you tell me about some of the characters that you've seen or we've heard about in Junie B? Give me one. Mr. Scary, Mr. Scary is in here. He's the teacher in first grade. How about if I tell you one and you can tell me? Well, I'm gonna put Mother. Has Mother been in uh, lots of stories? Yes. yes. Um, how about Jose? Yes. Jose. Who is that tattletale little girl? Connor May. Tattletale May has been in lots of our stories that we've read about Junie B. How about, how about that little girl who always says she has lots of money? Do you remember Noah? Uh, Richie Lou C. Lucille has been in lots of the stories we've read. Um, who was Junie B's favorite friend? Her best friend. She tells her best friend everything. What's his name, CJ? Herb. Herb. Herb has been in lots of the stories we've read about but Junie B. She also B. has another friend, and it's Grace. Where is Grace? I think I have Grace in here. That Grace. That Grace has been in lots of stories. Who is that little boy that's afraid of everything? Dayani. Hi, baby William. Oh, William's not in here, but that little boy who helped out? Sheldon. Has Sheldon been in lots of the stories? Yes, yes. Who can remember? Who can remember her little brother's name? Oh. Ollie. Ollie! Sierra! Ollie's been in lots of the stories! Miss Knight. Yes? And don't forget the one she loves. Jimmy loves. Is it Meanie Jim? Yeah, she calls him Meanie Jim. Shh. We won't tell anybody that he's really not a Meanie. How about her dog? What's her dog's name? Trenton? Tickle. Tickle! Her dog Tickle has been in lots of stories. Well, Mr. Scary is her first grade teacher. Who remembers her kindergarten teacher, Kaysen? Mrs. And that's all, right? She's got another name, but Junie B calls her Mrs. And that's all. And how about her friend Lenny? Has he been in lots of the adventures we've read about? And who, and who is her grandpa? Who remembers her grandpa's name? Go ahead, Kaylin. Grandpa Frank Miller. Grandpa Frank Miller is very important. But still, in all of these stories we've read about Junie B, who has been the main character? Junie B. Junie B. And she's had to be adventurous. She's had, she was scared at one time, so she's had to be brave. Well, today's story about Junie B, boss of lunch, now she's going to learn something about being responsible. And there's one character that we haven't met yet, but we're going to meet her in this story, and that is Gladys Gutsman. You know who she is? No, she's the lady, lunch lady. She's the lunch lady. What made you think that she was the lunch lady, Landon? Why did you think that? Because the boss of the lunch. lunch. So she's got an apron on, and I think she's a very important character. Junie B will still be the main character. The story will mainly about Junie B, but today we're going to meet Gladys Gutsman, and we're going to put her right here. Okay. Um, Mrs. Snyder. Yes, Noah? On, on Junie B. Jones is a is a beauty shop guy. Her, her name is now, now. Oh, you sit, Noah. You sit. You sit. Thank you. She's now, she's now. Gladys. Gladys Gutsman. Gutsman, you're right. Oh, I didn't, did we read Beauty Shop Girl together? No. Okay, so sit back and let's enjoy Junie B. Jones, Boss of Lunch. The author is Barbara Park. What does an author do? Roan? Writes the words. Writes the words. The illustrator is Denise Brunkus. What does an illustrator do, Joey? Uh, Draws the words. Draws the Picture. pictures. The author writes the words. The illustrator draws the pictures. Junie B. Jones, boss of lunch. Chapter one. In this story, in the contents, there are nine chapters. Good question.
So we're only going to read chapter one today, not normal. <laughs> Junie B, first grader, boss of lunch. Okay. Chapter one, not normal. She's starting writing in her journal, just like she does in all of her stories. Just like your Junie B journal you have at, in your desk. So chapter one, Thursday, dear first grade journal. Hooray, hooray, it came, it finally came. Yesterday, the delivery man brought it right to my house, and today I carried it to school for the very first time. Right now, it's sitting under my desk. I keep sneaking down to see a closer look, but my teacher just said to please stop doing that. Only guess what? He's not even watching me right now, so I think I'll sneak down there one more time, and that will be it, possibly. I wish myself good luck from Junie B, first grader. I put down my pencil and looked all around. Room one was still writing in their journals. I smiled very sneaky, and then I bent over in my chair real slow, and I reached way down, and I lifted up the lid of my brand new shiny lunchbox, hollered out May. Maybe that's why they call her Tattletale May. Junie Jones just opened her lunchbox again, Mr. Scary, and you told her not to do that anymore, remember? May is that tattletale girl who sits next to me. I do not actually care for her. My heart pounded very hard. I bent over even more, and I hid my head so my teacher couldn't see me. Only, I didn't do a good job of hiding, I guess, because just then I heard Mr. Scary's shoes walking toward me. Junie B, why is your lunchbox open again? asked Mr. Scary. Uh, didn't I just speak to you about this a few minutes ago? I kept my head down and I looked at the floor. One of Mr. Scary's shoes started tapping at me. Tappy shoes are not happy shoes, I think. Junie B, do you have a good reason for opening your lunchbox again? I quick closed my eyes and I tried to think of a good reason. Mr. Scary's shoe tapped even louder. I opened my eyes and peeked at it. And then bingo! All of a sudden, a miracle happened. One of my eyes saw my napkin in the corner of my lunchbox and a bright idea popped into my head. I quick grabbed the napkin and I started shining Mr. Scary shoes. <laughs> look, Mr. Scary, look, here is my good reason. See me, huh? I am shining your shoes with a napkin, see? I shined and I shined and I shined. This is the smartest reason I ever came up with, I said to myself very proudly. I smiled at him. Would you like some spit on that napkin? I asked real nice. A little spit makes shoes look real gleamy. Mr. Scary quick pulled his shoe away. No, Junie B, no spit, please. Just sit up in your seat. I sat up. Mr. Scary stared and stared at me. I wiggled in my seat very uncomfortably because staring teachers make me kind of squirmy, of course. Finally, Mr. Scary talked again. I want you to stay out of your lunchbox, Junie B. We have a rule in room one. Lunch boxes are to be opened only in the cafeteria. I did a sad sigh. Yes, I know the rule, Mr. Scary, but I waited a real long time to get this lunch box, and yesterday it finally came to my house. And so today is my first day of not carrying a plain brown sack to school. And so every time I look at that new lunch box, I feel so happy inside. I picked it up to show him. See how cute it is? My mother ordered it from a nature store. It has pictures of baby birds on it. See all of them? I pointed. This one is my favorite. It is called an owlette. Owlette is a name for a baby owl. My grandpa Frank Miller told me that. Frank Miller is so important in all of her stories. I pointed at a different bird. That one is an eaglet. An eaglet is a baby eagle. After that, I held my lunchbox way high in the air so all of room one could see it. See all the birdlets, children? There are owlets and eaglets and ducklets and chicklets. <laughs> I put my lunchbox on my desk and I took out the thermos. And see this thermos, people? This thermos has pictures of birds' nests on it. Isn't that cute? May made an icky face. Ick. Who wants to drink out of a stinky, pooey bird's nest? <laughs> I made a face at her. I do, that's who, May. I love drinking out of a stinky, pooey bird's nest. May reached into her desk and pulled out a lunch ticket. Well, I buy my lunch, Junie Jones. Bought lunches are much better than brought lunches. 
spot lunches don't sit around all morning and get soggy. I crossed my arms at that girl. Well, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard of, May. Brought lunches are way better than bought lunches, because brought lunches are made special by your very own mother. Mr. Scary did a frown. Okay, okay, girls, that's enough, he said. But May kept on arguing with me. For your information, Junie Jones, mothers are not professional lunch makers. Mothers are just plain old normal people. I stamped my foot at that girl, because that was my final straw. Do not call my mother normal, May. No one in my whole entire family is normal. So there. <laughs> May started to laugh. Then some of the other children laughed too. I do not know why. Finally, Mr. Scary snapped his fingers at them. I put my lunch box, lunch box back on the floor. It was not my best morning. The end of chapter one. Chapter two is tomorrow. Chapter two is hoagies. Ho what's hoagies? Well, that's what I was wondering. What do you think a hoagie is? Raise your hand if you think you know. We've had hoagies before in our lunch, but it wasn't called a hoagie. Sometimes it was called a sub. What's another word for a sub or a hoagie? Connor. A meatball That could be a meatball sub or meatball grinder, some kind of a grinder. But I want to ask you a question before we stop. Tell me, do you think what May said was, was hurtful, unkind? Uh -huh. Why do you think so, Shane? Why do you think that was an unkind thing to say to Junie B? Uh. Uh, because every uh, every mom every mom is, is important to every kid. Every mom is important to every kid, and it doesn't matter if you have a brought lunch or you have a bought lunch. So there's lots of feelings that go into Junie B stories, isn't there? So this is just another story um, about uh, another feeling, another kind of feeling that Junie B will feel. But in the end of the story, do we always have a happy ending in Junie B stories? Yeah. Maybe that's why I like them. Or maybe, or maybe a caught lunch, like you caught a lunch and it tastes good to you. A caught lunch? Yeah. Could be. So tomorrow, chapter two, hoagies.